welcome to Australia in Space TV. My name is Chris Cubbage. I'm the editor with the Australia in Space magazine. We're in Singapore with the Singapore Space and Technology Limited's Global Space and Technology Convention. I'm joined by the chair, uh, Jonathan Hung, or the you. chair of the SSTL. Thank you. Thank Chris. you very much for joining us. Thank you for having me, Chris. Wonderful. Uh, you are the founder of the. I'm going to keep calling it the SSTL. It's sure. uh, a mouthful, and we're full, <laughs> of a, full of acronyms as well. Welcome to Singapore. <laughs> well done. Um, but 2007, I mean, that's 15 years ago. Maybe what's the genesis? Because we've spoken to Lynette Tan, uh, who's the CEO, and um, I think we, we're going to get a sense you cover more of the civil space sector. So really, it's great to have the opportunity with the founder here. Yeah, what's the genesis uh, for starting it? So um, I guess if we go back uh, that long in history, <laughs> um, we started this because Singapore... Uh, we we looked at various facets of, of, um, of space, you know, but not specifically space itself. Now, Singapore was already pretty strong in various elements that actually we believe make the cornerstone of a, of a space sector, of a successful space sector. Right? Singapore has been always strong in the aviation aerospace hub, for yeah, example. Yeah. Uh, we have a good electronics foundation and that has dated back you know, for decades. Uh, precision engineering at the core, also very critical uh, foundational building block, you know, yeah. of, of any tech, uh, deep tech sector, you know, and the infocoms and media uh, segment has also been pretty fast paced as well. So these are four pretty necessary ingredients, you know, for a growing or emerging space economy. Uh, we really leveraged on that, you know, and we said, hey, you know, we have all the pieces, we have all the catalysts. Um, let's see, let's see whether we can play an active role in the space sector. Now fast forward then, you know, we put a, a, a quick strategy together and, um, and yeah, we started off that journey, you know, again, pulling together all the foundational building blocks that we had and it took off from there. Great. And you've structured it with an, an advisory board and you've got some advisory committees. Yes. Maybe just walk us through the, how you've structured it or how, how that might have changed over the years as well. Sure. So um, Singapore, again, uh, we, we, don't have a, well, we don't necessarily have a space agency per se yep. uh, today. There's no, uh, uh, th there's an equivalent. Uh, we, have, uh, we have economic space office, uh, the uh, Austin. Uh, we also have agencies that look at space in different forms and fashion. Yep. So um, the advisory council that makes up SSTA is actually drawn from expertise from all these various uh, leaders and various adjacent sectors that actually play a role or are adopters of space technology. Yep. That enables us to put things together. Uh, sometimes it may seem a little fragmented, uh, but in fragments, we draw the best in each and every one of them, and it allows us to then uh, put something holistically together. Yeah. Do you, in fact, with that fragmentation, do you find you know, the verticals uh, and the horizontal aspects and the interdependencies of space and other technologies and other domains, do you think that allows you have to that flexibility to have that fragmentation in things like advisory boards and the, and the, and the corporate structure? Actually, Chris, that's a very good point. So because of this uh, adjacencies, if you may, you know, yeah. we have found that, well, first of all, the space, sec the space tech sector diffuses into many different industries. Right, so whether it is in aerospace, in clean tech, you know, we have got now climate tech and you know, various yeah. others, uh, uh, so and so forth. Um, space is a uh, is is very prevalent and uh, it's a it's a very well adopted uh, technology. Sometimes a bit in the background, but you know, a lot of times now coming to the foreground. So these adjacent industries are well covered by all these different agencies. So certainly we've been actually leveraging on on horizontals. You know, going to allowing other industries to clearly see where space can be adopted and, uh, and leveraged on, and that has helped leapfrog a lot of our yep. traditional sectors forward as well. So it should be becoming more accessible. One area of si uh, has sort of popped up today in our in interviews as well is education mm. and attracting the younger work workforce into space or considering careers in space. Uh, it's also allowed some connectivity with other countries as well. Yeah. What what's some of the in initiatives or innovations in education, particularly here in Singapore, is to start to attract that workforce into the future. So I think first and foremost, it's uh, it's it's reached a momentum where we, we have spun off you know our training arm space faculty. Right? So yeah. space faculty is run by our chief executive, uh, Lynette, and um, from day one we've been running actually the the, uh, the core pillar of a lot of our programs is in training and development outreach. Right, we started that actually right in the beginning, back in yep. 2007. Uh, we have the International Space Challenge. You know, it's a it's a global challenge now. Every year there's a different challenge statement. Um, derived from industry experts, right? So we're not actually solving things, you know, on paper, but really things that, that, that 
keeps industry awake at night. Yeah. So that is something that year on year uh, has grown, you know, at a very steady pace. Uh, we also run training academies, you know, not just for students, you know, but recently also we have started to move into into uh, upskilling adults, young yeah. engineers, you know. So that's a major effort as well. Uh, then the third piece on the talent is also running innovation programs. Now that's a bit of a hybrid. We do that with both universities as well as startups, right? And the startup is actually uh, the startup ecosystem actually makes up now a pretty big chunk of our ecosystem, and we're watching that very carefully. Nice. Uh, now the spa there's a space hub, space gateway. Maybe talk us into uh, sort of that development as well. Well, I mean, we, we, have, we have always been, well, I guess in, in Singapore's case, in point, we, tr we try to make sure we are, we are as interconnected as possible. Yeah. I mean, we, we have been an air and sea hub for, for, for many years now. Uh, leveraging on that and moving forward, I guess the natural extension is Space Hub. Uh, we, we do work with a lot of our regional countries. But actually, the, uh, the I won't, well, loosely using the word hub status has, uh, has been more emphasized because uh, we have started to, to focus on thought leadership programs, right? And one of the topics, for example, is in disaster response. Got it. Right? We, we don't, uh, well, fortunately to today, I mean, we, we, we may not necessarily have our own natural disasters per se, uh, but we work in very close coordination with our regional partners in ASEAN, in Southeast Asia, Asia Pacific, as you know, um, to support you know, and, and respond to all these uh, aid efforts. So we work very closely with our, our humanitarian and disaster response uh, uh, coordination agency here, RHCC. And they actually are already an interlocutor of a lot of partners in the region. Uh, we, we are bringing satellite technology to the forefront, allowing predictive capabilities, you know, areas that they have, they have, we have not done before right, yeah. because of the advent of satellite technology to support the region. So this hub status per se is becoming more from a thought leader perspective, you know, and also able to technology scout technology front and test bit some of these new capabilities and then they can be rapidly deployed you know to all these other countries that, that truly need the support so when we say hub it's information sharing is it also supporting uh, startups as well or as, as you mentioned a bit of a test bed uh, also is a is it flexible in yes. terms of how that is going to be used quite end-to-end -end for the value chain uh, yep. or if you if you start from the, the startup perspective you know we, we support them literally end-to-end uh, you, know, -end. you know we have capitalization support market access you know they, yep. get, they go into region quickly so yes we do get you know out of our 41 startups today that are part of our program they come from 18 different countries yeah. and uh, the Singapore pure Singapore core is not a lot you know the the, the vast majority of them are foreign Right, they we don't require them to have a base here, but most of them uh, are in this uh, business with us because they want to access the the Asia market in yeah. a quick way, right? And uh, that's something we do, and we bring them to market. And if you move forward, then to the other parts, as you mentioned, the knowledge sharing, that that ideation center of excellence is something that we we try to promote, uh, and we work very closely with our regional partners to make sure they're in sync and proliferate. Uh, 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 best practices with everybody. Nice. Well, another impressive aspect was today signing of a number of MOUs, yeah. including ACT government, uh, Poland, Thailand. Uh, it doesn't sound like there was any um, uh, uh, sort of pattern in terms of the MOUs from Poland <coughs> to Thailand. Uh, is, where, are you, where do you fit into the region, I suppose? What are you doing with, say, uh, ASEAN countries and, and assisting them? Uh, rather than just being a hub, but I imagine you're working quite closely to develop ASEAN countries as an example, uh, as well as maybe Europe and the UK. Oh, most certainly. So, um, so again, mentioning uh, um, uh, one of my core themes actually for this is GSDC, which is um, not just in disaster response, you know, but climate change and you know trying to fight extreme weather, you know, uh, phenomena. These are areas that we 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 are are working actively with our ASEAN and regional partners you know, in, in terms of developing such capabilities through our disaster response agencies here in Singapore. So the agencies here are, are really uh, a co cooperative uh, uh, platform. Right? Yeah. They were founded with the partners already in place. So actually when we mention some of these response or at least you know, a, a broader theme effect satellite related technology technologies that we are deploying, uh, they are already in partnership with the region and actually the region, uh, resp uh, the, the regional uh, parties or responsible parties uh, do get first dips in what we are doing, right? right? We consult them and uh, I think that through that exercise already, uh, that partnership is actually strengthened. Right. There's a lot of ASEAN and Asia Pac partnerships, yeah. as you know, and collaborative agreements. Um, but as we we don't necessarily need to, I guess, ink MOUs with all of them. Uh, actually, the partnership has gone beyond that already. We are we are going into test bidding phase, you know, prototyping phase, 
uh, the ideation is ongoing all the time. Yeah. Uh, and most of these innovation platforms that SSTL actually uh, champions are typically a lot longer. You know, they're 12-month gestation periods. Why? Because we want to make sure that there's a useful throughput, something that actually comes out something of Something measurable, yeah. That's right, measurable outcomes and objectives that we can clearly uh, demonstrate to the end users. So in the GSDC, you see the heads of agencies here, heads of space agencies. Yeah. But actually, if you go around the crowd as well, you will see the, the various decision makers from there are agencies that are using space and satellites in other in other ways as well. Right. Well, look, it's been a, a fascinating day number one. Uh, we're back here tomorrow as well uh, with some other verticals. You've got some stuff with space faculty. Yes. And uh, we're doing our cybersecurity panel as well. Oh, yes, so there's yes. still a lot to go. Uh, but thank you for having us for day one at the GSTC. Sure. And Jonathan no, Hunt, always a pleasure. The <laughs> executive chair with thank the you. Singapore Space and Technology Limited. Thank, thank you very you. much for joining us. Chris, on thank you so space much. Yeah. Appreciate it. Good thank you so much. Cheers. Thank you.